Hey everybody, welcome to Frontly. My name is Justin and I will be your guide for all things relating to our no-code software. This video is for the users who are just starting out their Frontly journey and are looking for some guidance on one of our pillar features, the form block. The form block is your go-to module for gathering information from your users and updating them into your Google Sheets, all in real time. To make better sense of all the different toggles and settings of the block that are available to you, I want to focus on four form field states that can really help elevate the form filling and data gathering experience for you and your users. By the end of this video, you'll have a better vision of how to complete your first form and feel more confident experimenting with the rest of Frontly's app editor. So let's get to it. You can probably tell I'm using the sheet for collecting submissions for a job application. So it's possible you may be using the same sheet with other tools, in which case, not all of your sheet fields may be relevant to the Frontly form you're hoping to create. This applicant status field is a good example of one that's not likely going to be filled out by my users, rather handled internally by a recruiter elsewhere. So I can just hide this field from my app moving forward like so. You can see how my form exists on my page now in the early stage of my build, where the applicant stage field has been hidden or deactivated by default. This will mean that no values for this field will be submitted through this form. This can be changed anytime at the individual block level though, so if you ever change your mind or find a use for it on another block, simply reactivate it and continue on. I still prefer to keep this field hidden on my form, so I'll just deactivate it again. Next up, we have what's called hidden form fields at Frontly. Not to be confused with the hide and show toggles I've just covered, hidden form fields are active fields on your form that are not fillable or visible by your users. There are times when you may want to send predefined static or dynamic values through your form fields in order to send consistent and accurate data into your sheets. Notice here in my form the date submitted field is active, but not visible on my form here. After accessing the date submitted field settings, you'll see that I've selected the hidden field type, which does just that, it hides the field. When I select this field type, another hidden value field will populate below where I can enter my static or dynamic value. As this field is a timestamp on when the form was submitted, I have entered the time today variable here. As a demo, if you'd like to see how this submission would show in my spreadsheets, have a look now. The third form field state I want to talk to you about is the required one. This state is all about field validation. So having your form ensure that your user's inputs meets all of the requirements before they can submit their form and notifying them when they haven't. Check over to your edit field settings again and find the field validation settings here. In addition to making the field required, which is simply a non-blank value, there are many other rules you can set. By default, all of your fields will be set to required. In the case of my field additional information, I've just updated the field to let my users know in the field description that it is optional. To make this field a non-essential one for the completion of this form, I just need to toggle this switch off. And that's it. Here's a demonstration of my user trying to submit the form with the field validation still set to required. And here it is again without. Last but not least, inside the same field settings, you may have noticed this disabled toggle switch here. This toggle is to make the field still viewable to your users, but not fillable. This setting is especially useful for the edit form block versus the create one, where a designated filled row in your spreadsheet will surface its data and can be edited. In my app flow, I've created a follow-up process where my users can revisit their application and edit fields like the resume uploader and their additional information, but not the contact details like their name or email. 
In my app flow, I've created a follow-up process where my users can revisit their application and edit some fields like the resume uploader and additional information. So that is it for the Frontly form field states that we wanted to highlight for you today. There is plenty more to discover in the way of making your form more functional and personalized, but hopefully this little rundown is one of many that can help set you on the right path to create the Frontly app that you want. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our in-app support team or connect with our Discord community. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, everyone.